Hey there guys and welcome to another Factorio Mod Spotlight. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me. I'm super excited. Today we are going over the Train Supply Manager mod. And uh, this is a new train controller that Lord Couture, uh, if you don't know, he made the SpaceX mod, which is quite popular. Uh, he has come out with this train controller. And I'm really excited to spotlight it. He asked me to spotlight it and uh, he's given me a test map. This is not the test map. We're actually going to hop on that in a second. Um, but I want to show you some part of it here first. So... Uh, now, I know you're aware there's probably, there is another train controller, uh, I think it's like Logistic Train something, <laughs> I forget the name, um, uh, Logistic Train Network, I believe, and it is good, um, I believe this one's better, one, because this one is very simple to use, um, and the other one seemed a little more complicated, and then also, for, uh, anyone you doing this in Megabases, the other important factor is that Lord Couture's basically is non-existent in terms of game performance. Um, I know that LTN uh, take, uh, Legends of Train network, uh, network takes uh, quite a bit of game performance once you get a ton of trains uh, moving on it. Uh, Lord Couture's have been tested on a map with over 500 trains and took like 0 0.1 game update time. Um, this is the ERP map where we started using it and we probably have like 50 or 60 trains using it and I mean, it's not actually, like, actively, like, sending them places, but, I mean, just natively, it's 0 0.01 the game update time, and even when it's being used, it's, like, not, I think, I don't even think it hits 0 0.1 yet, because we don't have enough train, like, it's so minimal. So, let's start with this. Um, there is a research, um, and I want to let you know that this video will be a bit longer, because I'm going to try to make this a little more tutorial-esque, uh, since people... Uh, I think would like that. So train supply manager is unlocked with this research is very cheap um, and it unlocks supplier train station, requester train station, and a train requester. Okay. And then once you unlock that, you have this menu up here and there's all these buttons. So let's start with the stations. You have a supplier train stop and a requester train stop. The supplier train stop is basically where you're going to be pulling your trains from. Um, so you're going to want to create like yards essentially. Uh, so, oh, for example, like, uh, over here, we have Giga Copper Plate Yard 1. They're all named the same, and all of these are supplier train stations, right? And it's very important that they are. If they're normal stations, this won't work. Um, and then the requester stops are what's going to actually be requesting the train, so this is what would be in your builds where the resources are actually going to go. Um, and so, for example, uh, like... These guys um, in, in the green circuit build are requesters, and these are going to request trains based on the conditions we set. Okay, now you could do um, the supply stations directly at outpost if you like. It would be a little more complicated and stuff. Um, I, I would suggest doing yards like this. It would just make managing it a lot easier, I think. Um, so that's those. And then the train requester is where you actually set your request condition. So we're starting on the ERP map here because this is the simplest of the ways you can do it. And it's, well, one of the simplest is actually um, even a simpler way. I'll show you on the other map Lord Couture set up. But um, this is a very simple condition. So basically we've wired up a wire to the logistics network or in this case to tanks um, where we can read the fluid amount. So you can see we have 366k water here. And then we've wired that to a decider combinator just to the input and we have a very, very simple condition. If water is less than 100,000 output P, right? Um, now this could be whatever signal you want, but P uh, usually works pretty well for this. Um, so it's just outputting a signal of one P if this condition is true, which it's not because it's not less than 100,000. Um, and then this guy is just going to say, if trains on the way, and this is a special thing that comes with the mod. So if we go to signals, it's just down here. If trains on the way is less than P, then send a train. So basically, in essence, what this is saying is if it's less than 100k water, send a train. Um, and this light is off, um, and I'll go over the whole schema and stuff in a minute. And if we mouse over this, there's no nothing displayed. And this because this is because there's no trains on the way. Um, now, in this, this thing here, this train counter is attached to this stop. So you don't need to configure anything on the stop. You just need to name it and then configure it on um, this and this and then wire it to this guy. Uh, so if I change this, for example, to say if it's less than 400,000 
you can see this goes on and boom, we have an output signal and it's going to pull a train from right over here because we have our stations, Giga Water Yard 1, and there's tons of them, and it just pulled which, you know, anyone that's available, and it's going to send it over. Um, and there we go. So it's going to send a train over here. Once this condition's met, it will, um, you know, the train will leave once it's empty, and then it won't recall train until the condition drops below that again. So, uh, basically, uh, that's that. That's a very, very simple, straightforward way to do that. Um, now, let's go over the buttons um, really quick, and then we'll hop into the other menu. So, this is a list of, and these all have tool tips too, so it's pretty straightforward. This is a list of all trains, current trains at supply stops. Okay, so to clarify, this is not a list of the supply stops. Um, this is a list of the trains actually at supply stops. Um, so this over here is a unique identifier, which you'll, I'll show you more in a minute. So this shows all the trains we have at supplier stops, right? Um, this here is requester train stops and priority assignments. Um, so we have requests here for multiple things. Um, one empty one, I think we goose something up there. Um, a few not defined that we haven't like named or set up yet. And then we have all these here, right? Okay, so this is just going to show that and, and it'll show a little better on the other map. And then I'm going to skip this for a minute. Um, so show key train. Um, this just shows the unique number identifier for the uh, like supplier yard keys, basically. Um, and then this one is list of supplier train stops. So this is actually going to then show every single supplier train stop, regardless if there's a train at it or not. This just shows all of them. Um, and then show unsatisfied requests. And there is one outstanding request. Um, so this basically means that there's a request and there's no trains that can fulfill it. Uh, that's that's just pretty much what that is. So over here, this and you have to um, a, a note here is these do not update live, and this is completely intentional. It's mostly because um, for UPS reasons and stuff. So if you want to like, if something changes, you need to close it and reopen it. Um, so then this thing, this is where you set your priorities. Okay. Um, so the resource is, you can pretty much use whatever icon you want. It would make sense to use the one that actually goes with what you're doing. Um, so for example, if we just set one up here, let's just say, I mean, we already have this. Um, so this will just clear the whole thing. This allows you to basically edit it. Um, you can add stations in here and the order in which you add them, this is very important. The order in which you add them is going to be the priority that the trains are pulled from. So, for example, if I do that, now of course this makes no sense, you know, but for example, um, this is going to pull from Gigawater Yard 1 first, but if there's no train available there, then it's going to pull from this next one, which again in this case makes no sense, but for example purposes, and you can add multiples, you can just add more, right? And so this will set up your priorities. Um, and then you just hit update like I did there. Um, and so, you know, if it's pull from here, if it can't, if it can't pull from this, if it can't, then pull from this, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and then this is just the ID, which kind of corresponds to the other buttons we went over. So let's go ahead and hop into the actual test we have here um, set up that Lord Couture set up for us. So this is a test map. Uh, and again, if we look at these buttons, it's going to be basically the same thing. Um, so requesters, this is basically, again, what's requesting. Uh, and then this is the uh, trains currently at stops. Currently, there's only one sitting at fuel. Okay, now he set this up. So we have a big iron supply, a big iron consumer, a little iron consumer, and a little iron supply. Now with the priorities, this is where we need to take note, right? With the priorities, he's set... Um, you know, big iron for, for this particular ID. Um, if we use the ID iron plate, it'll just pull from big iron, period. However, if we use the ID um, signal one, when we go to set up the station, which I'll show you how in a second, um, it will pull from little iron. And if there's nothing at little iron, then it will pull from big iron. Okay, and refueling we'll touch on in a minute as well. So let's head over to the station. And again, this... Um, this guy is going to a quote-unquote outpost, 
filling up and then goes to a quote unquote yard here where it just has these supplier stations. You don't have to set anything up on those. So coming over here, how do we actually set this up? Um, so let's go to this very simple example first. This is like the simplest you can possibly do. This is, there's not even a common error. This is saying trains on the way is less than one, basically, okay? So in essence, if the trains on the way is less than one, send a train. So, <laughs> you know, basically constantly send a train is, is what this is saying here. Um, it's super, super set up. Um, so, or like super easy, right? So this will just basically say, you know, if there is ever a point where there's not a train on the way, send a train. Um, and you can see here, it's just always basically gonna be requesting one. Now, what is the deal with these priority schemas? Okay, now this is important. So this is where you actually set what it's going to pull from. Um, so in this one, he's using the example where he actually has the multiple priority set. So you would go here, this would be empty normally. Um, if I take one of these guys um, and then take a light, of course, and go here, this would be empty, right? It'll, it'll look like this. Um, so you go here and you set it to whatever you want, which is going to correspond to your IDs, remember that you set up here, okay? Um, so for this one, he's using signal one, which corresponds to this, which, and it shows it here. So this is using the priority, pull from little iron, if there's nothing there, pull from big iron. Um, if you were to use iron, then it would just pull from big iron, right? So this is actually telling you what yard it wants it to pull from. Uh, and that's what you want to set up here in the schema. And then in your actual like lamp, the train request, this is where you set your condition, okay? Now I wanna show you a bit more complicated, but a more effective way of doing this. And it isn't really not that much more complicated. So here we have chess wired up in a normal setup. You would wire this to a row of port um, typically, uh, but we're using these infinite infinity chess here. Okay. And this thing is reading amount of iron plate in these total divided by the amount that a train carries. Okay. So depending on your train length this is going to change. We're using a one, one, one. So it's 4,000 iron. If you're using like a one, two, one, it's going to be 8,000 iron because there's, you know, two cargo wagons, two times four is eight, so on and so forth. So you're taking the iron in the system divided by the amount a train can carry and then outputting iron. Um, okay. Now, so this guy is wired to the input of this arithmetic combinator. And then the output of this one is wired to the input of this one. And this guy is basically saying, uh, you know, take two in minus the amount we have. So to kind of explain that a bit further. Um, basically, uh, the first, so the first one is just doing a formula that's just looking at the amount of iron, dividing it by the amount of train can carry, and then outputting the amount of iron, basically, is what this first one's doing, okay? Um, then the second one is basically just performing simple arithmetic where it's saying how many train loads do you want minus the number you already have. So if we want two train loads, so this would be train loads minus what we already have, right? And then it's going to output that as a signal P. And currently, so then it goes to here and we're just saying trains on the way is less than P, you know, enable. And then he's wired to this and this thing's requesting a train. Now it's always going to be requesting like two trains or one because these are always empty. However, if we uncheck this, these actually will fill up and this will this request will start going down and it, at some point actually get to zero because these chests are filling up. Um, so this is just very simple um, once you kind of understand it. Um, you know, just amount, divide by amount your train can carry, output the remainder. Um, and then number of train loads you want minus the amount you have in the network. And I'll put that as P. Um, and then you can see this is stopped requesting because these are full enough to where it doesn't need to request a train pretty much. And there you go. So there's that. Now in terms of fueling, last thing, um, fueling is disabled on this thing. But if you go into mod settings and go into map um, down here, if we change this, um, and this amount is in 
like megajoules of fuel. So if we change this to like 20 um, and apply, the trains should start going to their fuel stations. You can see here, um, that actually doesn't have fuel. Sorry, there's fueling trains. <laughs> um, so that, that would turn on the fuel stops. You can mess with this again a little bit. Um, you can uh, pretty much just do whatever you want. There were other settings in here as well. Uh, as you can see uh, down here, there's UPS turbo mode, um, which approves UPS efficiency at the cost of parent responsiveness, which isn't check. And really, I don't need that. know that you really would even need that. Like I said, super UPS friendly to begin with. Um, but that's basically an overview. I know this was quite long, but I, I, I had people say that if I spotlighted it, they wanted more tutorial-esque, so I tried to do my best here, guys. Um, and you can, like, there's tons of other ways you can set this up. Don't get me wrong. This is not like you can only do this or only do this. You know, if you know your way around combinators, you can set whatever that kind of condition you want. Um, and you just need to wire the output of whatever combinator you're using to the train requester, set your condition, and then make sure to wire the train requester to this stop. It's a little difficult to see because of the um, way it's situated, but this is wired to here. Um, and then make sure that you give this a little bit to load stations, like this priority schema, because it can take a minute um, before you close it. Uh, and then I believe that's it. The last thing I would say is make sure you wire up everything before setting the schema. Um, I had a few issues on the ERP map where I like wired part of it and set the schema and then wired it lastly to this and it like called all of the trains at once. <laughs> so um, do make sure you're careful with that. Um, so hopefully this gave you a good idea of the mod. It's a really cool train controller. You can do so much with it. And uh, also um, there is, locators provide a ton of information. The reason I was pausing there during some of this is I was looking at a sheet I had um, pulled up that he has listed on the mod portal that explains basically all of this in text that I was just uh, referencing again. Um, so there's that, and he also has like another demonstration video. There's just tons of info he's put out. So if this wasn't enough, you can check all that out. Um, link below to the mod portal where you can grab it. Like I said, I highly recommend it for a train controller. It's super simple to use um, and can be complicated if you want it to be um, and do like all kind of crazy stuff, but then also it's super UPS friendly and stuff too. So That'll do it, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. I do apologize for my little snubbles. I did reread the I did read the document previously, but I'm dyslexic, so it's a little hard for me to like find stuff and read while talking at the same time. Um, so I, I did my best. Anyway, thanks again, guys. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you all, and do take care.